Today, we talk about social media, right? Uh, I said there are four, four things which we need to consider uh, with regards to the, let's say, infrastructure of HR. One was HR organization, as I said, who is doing what? We talked a little bit about how IT, information technology, can support HR. In the next session, we'll talk about controlling using indicators, figures. And today, we talk about social media. Five years ago, nobody would have presented this as part of HR. Right? But what we learned in the last few months, I can say, is that social media became a very, very hot topic in HR. And while everybody knows what that is, more or less, companies really ask themselves, how can we use it? How can we really use social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, all the things to support all these fields which we see on the, on the middle part of this triangle, okay? And this is what we're gonna talk about today. Our leading questions are, how are both the role of the users, you, yeah, the employees, and the markets uh, are affected by Web 2.0 and social media? So what is the impact of social media, Web 2.0, on users, on the market? I will show you a lot of examples. Yeah? What are typical examples around social media usage within human resource management? Um, how can you implement this? So if a company wants to use social media, and the question is not only how to use it, I will talk about this well, but what are the first steps in case that you still have nothing? When you are on the green field, when there is nothing in place, how do you start using social media? You might say, yes, uh, uh, register on Facebook and uh, start running a fan page. Ah, that might be wrong. Yeah? You have to have a strategy. So we'll talk about the strategy as well. And the last point, which is quite important, is that there are companies out there where I would recommend never to use social media. Never. Because they don't have the required culture. They don't have the required openness. <laughs> so there are some conditions, legal conditions, uh, cultural conditions which a company need to consider before starting using social media. Okay, So this will be our four guiding questions. So let's start at the beginning and I'd like you to, to understand, really to understand two major terms in this particular context. The first term is Web 2.0 and the other term is social media. Let me explain <laughs> this real quick. Um, when there is a Web 2.0, there probably is a Web 1.0. In fact, we didn't name it that way. <laughs> Web 1.0 was the, the first generation of the Internet. And, I mean, that was quite simple. There was a publisher, let's say a company, or any kind of media like, like uh, Spiegel or any newspaper, yeah, and they have, they, they run their website, right? they run their website, and they post some content here, articles, pictures, whatever, and there are the consumers, they read it, and there is, there is only one direction, a publisher using the web to communicate to the users, right, that's all, right? traditional Websites are built that way. My own website, for instance, that kind of website. <laughs> uh, the website of our university is first generation. Yeah? There is a university, we publish content, and you, or uh, the outside world, can read it. Now with Web 2.0, things became different. Um, with Web 2.0, we still have websites, we have still have websites. Uh, we do not talk about the consumers anymore. We talk about the prosumer. 
and the prosumer, that word indicates that there are two parts in it. One part is that you are on one side a consumer, yes, you, you, you read information which you get via the internet, but you also produce content. You produce and you use content. Yeah? User generated content. Uh, you know all these examples like Wikipedia. Yeah? There is no publisher there anymore. There is no publisher. Wikipedia just provides the platform and who writes the content? It's the user. Yeah? It's, it's really simple. I, I can recommend you to do this. Just write an old Wikipedia article. Yeah? Or change any content. You can do it in a minute. It's easy. Right? So that's Web 2.0. Web 2.0, to put it simply, means users provide the content on these pages. That's Web 2.0. Wikipedia, YouTube, Facebook, eBay, all these websites where you can write into the internet. Right? Everywhere where you can generate content, that's Web 2.0. And there was a big revolution uh, some years ago. Now, what is social media? Social media is, is Web 2.0. Social media is Web 2.0. Oh, you all know Facebook. Who provides the content on Facebook? It's you. Right? It, because it's the user who provides the content. Then it's Web 2.0. Right? But with social media, it's kind of special. Yeah? I try to put it that way. Still, we have a website. www.com Like Facebook. But what you find there on these pages is not primarily a content. It's, a yeah, it's content, but what you primarily find there is what? What do you find on social media? People. Huh? Sorry? People. people. <laughs> That's it. On Wikipedia, you don't find people. On eBay, you don't find people. On Amazon, you don't find people. But on Facebook, on LinkedIn, you find people. And you not only find the people, you find also their relations. And you find the content which is provided by the people. Okay? So, so when you enter a website like Facebook, you find the people there, your friends, peers, and you see how they are connected, and along with the people, you find the content. So, I mean, you all know this. But what I want you to take home, really, is the difference between the first generation of the web, the second generation, Web 2.0, what is the difference? And then, what's the difference between Web 2.0 and social media, right? from an academic point of view? Okay. So you should be able to differentiate a website whether it's, uh, you should tell whether a website is just Web 2.0 or just Web 1.0 or whether it's social media. Social media, in my eyes, is a subgroup of Web 2.0. Right? Or in other terms, social media is always Web 2.0 because user deliver content. Okay? Now, the interesting thing with social media is compared to Google is that you can like things, right? You can like things. You find an article somewhere on an online newspaper and you can like it and you can share it with your friends, right? So the idea of social media is also that the content which is mostly liked by the people become the most important. Yeah? If people like a video and if they share it, if they post it on Facebook, then this video on YouTube becomes important. Okay? The importance of content depends on how many people like it. And that's a fundamental principle of social media. The people tell what they like 
by liking it, yeah, click the button, the so-called so social bookmark, and by sharing it via their personal networks. That's the principle of social media. Let me, let me explain Google, because Google is, is more, more yeah, a traditional way of telling which page is important or not. And you should also understand uh, the basic principles <laughs> of Google. Now, um, I have two websites here, right? Website A and website B. Who of you has an own website? Who of you has ever generated a website? Okay, about what? In Facebook or yeah, Not on Facebook, a website, a static website. We have a student's website like IB Consulting, we have a website of business talks. Yeah? So let's take the example of business talks, yeah, a student initiative <laughs> where we organize congresses every year and bring in uh, entrepreneurs to our university. We have a business talk website, www.business-talk.net. <laughs> right. Um, now, how can you make sure that the people will find this website? Uh, how, how can you make this? Now we talk about search engine optimization. How does Google tell whether this website is important or not? How? It's written on the slide and you should understand this. How is it in science? Let's talk about this for a minute. How is it in science if you have an article, let's say in the International Journal of Marketing, how can you tell whether this article in the International Journal of Marketing is important or not? Hmm? If you have it cited in a lot of other works, then it's probably yes. really important. Yes. When there are other researchers in the world who cite this article, when many people cite this article, refer to this article, then this article obviously is important. If nobody refers to this article, then this article is not important. That was the idea where Google came from. They thought, okay, a website <coughs> is important when many other websites refer to it or link to it. Right? So here is website on A, there's website C, which has a link on it that refers to website A. The more websites you have that refer to a website, A, then, 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 then the, the, the higher is the importance of this website. That's the, that's the basic algorithm behind, behind Google. Now, the question is also, and to go, to go a step further, um, now you can tell a friend and say, well, you have your own website, a very important, uh, one very unimportant website, a private website. Can you please put a link on your website to my website so that my website becomes important? Does that work? No, not at all, because the other website is not important. <laughs> so the importance of my website depends on whether or not other websites refer to it and whether they are important. Okay? How can we tell the importance of the other website? Again, it's how many other websites refer to this. So, if we make it that, that uh, a website like in Germany, www Spiegel Online, if they refer to our Business Talks website, then the importance of our Business Talks website increases dramatically in a minute. Right? Okay? So that's, that's the basic principle of Google. And the difference with social media is that in social media, it's not that principle of, of, of Google, it's the more people like a website, the higher, the more important it is. So that's the, uh, the alternative algorithm, the alternative idea of social media. And that's why Google is very scary about Facebook. Yeah. Again, in Google, Google 
Google analyzes the importance of a website based on the links to it, but in social media, the importance of a website, of a content, depends on how many people like it. Okay, so that's much more social. Okay, so that's theory. <laughs> okay, uh, now let's talk about practice. And I mean, there is one fundamental thought also about social media. Whenever you talk with any kind of company out there. Yeah? Uh, so people uh, will tweet what they are eating for breakfast, post picture of their breakfast to uh, Facebook, yeah? and other people will look at the breakfast and make comments. Uh, no offense, future man, but is everyone in your time retarded? <laughs> yeah? Sorry to burst your bubble, dude, but you asked. Yes, that's the future. We post our pizza, our pizza on Facebook and other people like it. Sorry. That's ridiculous. Huh? That's ridiculous. No, it's not. No, it's not. And we talk about why. Yeah? Why is it so important that people post their pizza? Yeah? Okay? So, who posts the pizza? Uh, I can refer to a website which I can recommend. Uh, you find the link here. There is a tool delivered by uh, analyst Forrester. It's online. It's always real time. It's based on an international panel. Uh, we can go to this. I, I don't do it, but, but you can do it uh, as a preparation. And uh, you, can, you can filter. You can look at specific target groups. You can, you can for instance, here uh, I have the people 18 to 24 and uh, country Germany and gender is not uh, specified and now I can look at very different groups of people and, and you can ask yourself to which group you belong yeah? there is this ladder and, and this ladder of social technology usage how they name it is a way to classify different internet users into different groups that's the leading way of building categories um, in the website, so, in the web. So, we still have in this target group, which, which is you. you, you belong to this target group, right? Um, there are still 25% who are inactive. Yeah? Rather passive. Sometimes reading something, but not delivering anything. May maybe a little bit on Facebook, but rather passive. The most people are spectators. Spectators are those that, that read content, that only consume content. Right? Uh, joiners are those which have a presence on, 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 on social media, on different platforms, not only on Facebook, but also on LinkedIn, um, on German uh, social uh, uh, website like Xing, um, Twitter. Uh, we have some percentage which are collectors, people who constantly collect data using RSS feeds and, and, and so on. We have 26% of critics. These are those which make comments, yeah? which not only buy something at Amazon, but also make comments whether they like it or not, the product, or, or, or so. And only 19% of creators people that really write blogs, upload videos on YouTube, um, write or edit Wikipedia articles. So the majority of your group are those users with, which primarily consume content and share content in social media more or less, but there are only a few really that deliver real content. I mean, whom of you has ever written a Wikipedia article or uploaded a YouTube video? Whom of you? One? I've edited an article. Yeah, I've edited an article, okay, two, three, okay, 10%. Okay, 10%. And that's valid. I mean, that's valid for most countries that the content in the web is delivered by one to 5% of the people. 
right? Okay. So that's just as a first step looking who is using social media in which way, okay? Um, now, why is that important? Um, why is that important in business? Uh, we not only talk about HR here. Um, we learn that markets totally change. So, you buy a digital camera. Okay, let's imagine this. You buy a digital camera. And the digital camera really sucks. It's a bad product. What comes to your mind? What can you do? I let other people know that it's in fashion. You let other people know. Right? You made holiday in a lousy hotel, but the website was really great. What will you do? You let other people know. You go to pages like TripAdvisor, <laughs> Holiday Check, Booking, and you will make your evaluation so that everybody can see this hotel is lousy. You hurt this hotel, and you know it, and you do it. You think that's fair, right? That's what you do. Now, think, not just think 10 years ago. You were 12 or so, right? These things were not there. There was only word of mouth. Right? You ask your friends, where did you spend your holidays in Italy? Oh, that's a great hotel. Can you write down the name of this hotel? Right? I mean, you, you were in total and complete darkness. You didn't see anything. You, did, you, did not, you could not share any idea with anyone. Only with the people you saw. Right? You were, in earlier days, you were totally isolated. You had no choice, no chance, sorry, no chance to share anything with anybody. Yeah? I did an experiment here. I also reported this experiment on my blog on Harvard Business Mansion about an experiment with, with eight students yeah? which spent one week without internet and mobile communication. One week without internet. I did a picture of this group this group and I tagged all the people and I communicate on Facebook that these people made an oath that they will not be there for a week right so I increased social pressure on these people <laughs> so they were really off and they had to communicate they had to document their experiences what is strange in a life without internet what is different what are the difficulties which I face yeah I mean, you can experience this if you just don't use your mobile for a, for a day. Yeah, do this. It will be traumatic. You will feel isolated. Yeah? You, you... If you want to meet people in the evening, you have no chance to do it. Yeah? When I was a student, after lecture, I had to talk to my friends. Hey... Where do we meet this evening? I had to do this after lecture because when I was at home in my room, I was alone. I did not even have a telephone. How can you meet people if you don't have a telephone? No email, no nothing, right? You are isolated. And you constantly feel that you don't have the information you need. Yeah? So, I mean, there was, it was a totally different world. And... In all marketing literature, or let's say most marketing textbooks, most marketing textbooks, I don't want to name any, but most textbooks of marketing or HR were written in times where the markets were totally different, where we did not have this way of communication and sharing things. So markets changed. And there is one book which I really can recommend, at least a website it's the Glue Train Manifesto. And there was some thought leaders in social media and internet who already in the late 90s, in the late 1990s, communicated 95 theses about the future of markets. 95, why? Because Martin Luther, in his days, also 
proposed 90, uh, 95 theses. So. so this is just a collection. Yeah? In total, there are 95. Markets are conversations. I mean, that's interesting. That's the first thesis. Markets are communication. What else should they be? It's communication. It's the way how people talk about products. It's the way how people talk about suppliers. Right? In both internet work markets and among intranet work employees, people are speaking to each other in a powerful new way. Do we realize this? Yeah? Companies can now communicate with their markets directly via Facebook, for instance. If they blow it, it could be their last chance. Yeah? You know what I mean. To speak with a human voice, companies must share their concerns of their communities. They must be close to you. If you have any complaints about any company, uh, whether it's Spalsen and you have some complaints about some cookies or about the gummy bear and you want to share something with Haribo, they have to take this seriously because it happens in, in, in public, right? We know some people from your company. They are pretty cool online. There are networks into companies. Companies are no more hidden castles where you did not have a chance to have any look inside. You have networks into these corporations through the people which you might know. Um, we are waking up and linking to each other. We are watching, but we are not waiting. <laughs> Uh, but first, they must belong to a community. You, as an entrepreneur, as a company, you must build your network. If you don't have the network, you cannot communicate to the market. I will talk about this later. Very important principle. Markets do not want to talk to flats and hucksters, whatever that is. Uh, they want to participate in the conversations going on behind the corporate firewall. That's what I mean. They want to... Even if a company develops, de de delivers something like any brand, Rittersport chocolate, there are thousands of people who want to share information, want to know information, want to interact with Ritter. Yeah? You share things around chocolate. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't do this, but there are some people who like to do this. So there is no more this corporate firewall. So companies open themselves and talk to their communities, talk to their markets. You're too busy doing business to answer our email. Oh gosh, sorry, Guy, we'll come back later maybe. Yeah? You expect very fast response. Social media is incredibly fast. And that's the difference to the old, old mail kind of <laughs> system, the snail mail. There are no secrets. Okay, this just gives you an impression uh, how people in the late 90s I've seen how markets will change, and they did change. And we see all this now, 14, around 14 years later. Yeah? And I want you to really see this difference. Think about, talk to your parents, talk about how they did, how they made their choice among uh, uh, products. Talk to your father, how he bought his first camera, and how he got the information about the camera, and what he did when he was not satisfied with his camera. Talk to them. Talk, talk to them. I'm sure you did this already. And you see the difference how markets change. And everything you read about marketing in HR is about the old world. And you must reflect how these things change with the new world. It's changed so fastly. Yeah? And it's, it's really incredible. It's, it was a kind of a revolution. And how does communication now work in social media? I mean, again, you all know this, but I want you to show this in a more systematic or a more academic perspective, to add this to your own personal perspective. Uh, I mean, let's, let's have a look at Twitter. Let's have a look at Twitter. Whom of you Twitters? Okay. <laughs> You're our social media joke. <laughs> okay. I Twitter as well. How many followers do you have? Uh, in my account, personal account, like 1,000. 1,000, okay. My other account, 70,000. 70,000? Okay, cool. Oh, I must follow you. <laughs> See what you do good. Yeah, yeah, we must do something really well. I have only about 1,000 followers. I'm proud of this. <laughs> um, in the old world, there might be an incident. Anything. 
a movie premiere or an accident or mm -hmm. something. And then hopefully a journalist is there yeah, and is doing an interview afterwards. Could be any kind of incident, right? Really, any kind of incident. And then a journalist comes into play and does an interview with some people. He, he makes a draft about an article and send it to the editor and then the medium Spiegel online for instance they they translate it into an article yeah and then they publish it and then there are the readers and some of the readers they read it that's the old style of web 2 web 10 communication or the old time print of using print media right and this took a while yeah it took a while from from the incident to the point of time where the article is published and the reader actually read it. I can take a day or two. If it's a very important incident, maybe an hour or some hours. With social media, it's absolutely different. There is a premiere. Yeah? The first time a movie was shown and there is a specialist uh, in the cinema. Well-known expert. And he is watching the movie. And while he's watching the movie, he already tweets a tweet. Yeah? This movie mm -hmm -hmm, really sucks. Okay, this expert has some followers, those who are interested in all this cinema kind of stuff. They read it. When do they read it? When do they read it? Sorry? They follow him. They read it immediately. Yeah? A second later, they start reading it. Maybe. Some of these. They read it as, oh, this expert said that this important movie um, with Brad Pitt really sucked. And then they make a retweet so that their followers can read it. And then these followers retweet it again so that their followers... And, and within some minutes... This information is spread across the network. That network. Those who are interested in information, they get this information in a minute. And that's the difference uh, with uh, platforms like Twitter compared to the very old style of how an incident gets, inf gets communicated to the readers after hours or a day. Okay? I mean, that can also be a problem. I mean, there was the, uh, a case with uh, online shopping portal Otto in Germany. There was one poor employee who, who uh, edited a price tag to an Apple computer, a MacBook, for 49.90 euro. Obviously, that was a mistake, yeah? but the price tag was there. You entered Otto online, you found the MacBook, and the price was 49.90 euro. There was one guy, a guy like you, yeah, who found this, bought some of these, <laughs> then took the URL of this product, shortened it, you know, short URL, and tweeted it on Twitter. MacBook, 50 euro, here's the link. Many people saw it, bought a MacBook, retweeted it. And within minutes, within minutes, Otto successfully sold thousands of <laughs> MacBooks. Okay, this is how it can work, right? So, by the way, uh, the end of the story was that the consumers didn't get the MacBook for 50 euro, but they got uh, a voucher for, for the same price or 100 euro. Uh, and they made a kind of lottery so that some of the consumer really got, that got to make MacBook. So it was a very fast. Within 24 hours, Otto had to respond and had to publish their reaction because the entire community knew this. So they had to come up with a reaction within 24 hours. They had no time to ask 
a lot of legal experts. Yeah? It's also part of social media. You have to be incredibly fast as a company if something happens. Yeah? And the community was fine with it. I said, okay, that was a fair reaction. And what they did with that, re with, what did they do with the reaction of Otto? They shared it and it was fine. At the end, it was a public relations success. <laughs> That's social media, okay? Let's switch to HR. Let's switch to HR. I just put here some, some ideas and they are not complete. What I'd like you to think of, and I'd like to go back to the very first slide here. I mean, think about talent acquisition, recruiting. Think about candidate selection. Think about work, yeah, how, how companies shape the work environment change management, think about learning, think about compensation benefits, think about retention, think about talent development. And now, really, as an exercise, pick out one of these fields and think about how social media can support these fields. Oh, the selected one. Right, you can do this. Is there any field, any area in our HRM landscape where you would say social media does not play any role. Let's, put it, let's ask this way. Is there anything in HR which you cannot support via social media? Please. Can you use social media for recruiting? Yes, of course. Can you use social media for learning? Yes, of course, we talked about this. Can you use social media as part of change management? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, you can involve people, can communicate to the people. Uh, can you use social media for selecting candidates? Yes, sure, <laughs> Google them. <laughs> but you can mo do more than this, I'll show an example later. Um, can you use social media as part of compensation benefits? When it comes to money? Yes, of course. You can make peer reviews. You can. Well, I'll show you an example later. I mean, there. We, we really. It's hard. Yeah. At least in our fantasies, to find any field where we think no, social media does not play any role. Okay. And I want you to think about this. Okay. How can you use social media for retention? How can you use social media for retention? I didn't mention this one, right? <laughs> How can you? Any ideas? I think if you advertise a company, then it becomes popular, or people want to work there, then you Okay, you can you can make some internal employer branding, maybe. Uh, but but moreover, if if a company supports their employees in making friends, yeah, in and get connected to each other internally. That's one way to retain them. I told you that. The best way to retain people is to make sure that you have friends inside the companies. So inside the company. So why not? If you if you at least you can contribute to a certain extent to it. Right? Um, so I used to name this the democratization of human resource management. Democratization. In earlier days, there was an HR department. They made, the they made the decisions. They made the processes. They defined the policies. And today, the people, you, the employees, the applicants, they more and more take an, act, take over an active role in everything we do in human resource management through social media and web tool. Employers are evaluate big current and former employees and applicants. Yeah? You know this. User share image videos and shop ads. The good and the bad ones. <laughs> yeah? If it's the bad ones, that can lead to a so-called what? Shitstorm. Everybody can act as a headhunter. There are platforms out there where you really can earn money 
by referring people out of your network to posted positions. Right? Um, candidates are presented in the web as you are and you passively wait for employers to get in touch with you. And that's new. You take over control. You sell yourself in the web. Interviewers, future colleagues and managers are Googled by candidates. When you are invited to an interview and you know who will sit at the table, you will Google these people, will you? Yes, yes of course. Um, uh, employees and candidates decide what's good or bad. That very much relates to the Clue Train Manifesto. You recommend employers or you don't recommend employers. You talk positively about employers and jobs or you don't. Yeah, you share your experience, so at the end it's you. Okay? Teachers and learners become the same. You consume content in the web, but you all can produce content in the web. We talked about this uh, when we talked about learning, you remember. <coughs> Users who share similar interests communicate, collaborate and learn in virtual communities. Yeah? If you have a question as an employee, whom do you ask? Your boss? No, you will, you will ask somebody where you believe he or she will have the answer. And you do it via the web. And you will find this person via the web. Uh, current and former employees evalu evaluate each other, peer rating, we talk about this. Right? People share their thoughts about strategic corporate changes. Also, when we talk about change management, you can involve people. So, this is just, this is not a complete list, but this list is there to to really talk about this question, how can we support social with, how can we support human resource management with social media? Let me add one point and then we, we move to a very concrete social media strategy after a break. Here I just indicated how social media can be used um, when it comes to talent acquisition. This is only about talent acquisition. And on top you find all these things which you know, or should know. Well, we talk about employer branding. How can I position and present our company as a good employer? How can I get an outside view how, I, how other people, candidates, or former employees, or current employees do see us? Yeah? How can I share career informations? Yeah? We will be on this career fair next week. You know, how can you share this information? Or how can you post job ads? How can you interact with candidate, candidates? How can you search talents? Yeah? How can you retain talents when you have found these? So these are major fields as part of talent acquisition. You all know this. What I've indicated here is how different platforms can contribute to these different things. And it's not scientifically proven. It's absolutely fine if you have a totally different view of this. Yeah? And I would not expect that you learn this light by heart, seeing, okay, there is a bubble and there is not a bubble. I mean, that's only my view. But what I would like you to do is to think, okay, how can I use LinkedIn or Xing in Germany? Xing and LinkedIn is more or less the same. How can I use this as part of recruiting? I see two major points. You can post jobs there, but most importantly, you can find talented people there. How can you use Facebook to present yourself as a company? Yeah. Are there ways to do this? Think about the different boxes and talk this through. The main message of this particular slide here is that with different platforms, you can do different things, and not every platform is uh, useful to do anything in recruiting. Right? So if a company wants to do primarily employer branding, okay, you can use all platforms more or less, but primarily, primarily in my eyes, YouTube and blogs, not really Facebook. You want to get in interaction with your target group, Facebook is probably the best platform. But you think of it, okay? Maybe I'm wrong. 
depending on, on, on in the industry. In arts, for instance, if, you, if you're looking for a great musician, where do you find him or her? Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. No, I mean, I can go to profiles and I'm always updated with new videos. So okay, on Facebook yeah. maybe? Where do you find a strong artist, a singer, a musician, a guitarist? YouTube. YouTube. Do you find a manager on YouTube? <laughs> no. Right. You better use LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, students, whom of you is on Facebook? Everybody. Whom of you is on LinkedIn? Yeah. Half of you. In a year, you will all be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who is on Xing? Okay. Well, we can connect each other if you like. <laughs> okay. I use all these uh, platforms heavily. Yeah. So. In practice, let's think about a very concrete case. Let's say there is a mid-sized company in the world for it. Yeah? One and a half thousand employees. And uh, they think about using social media. They heard that it's important. <laughs> so now, what to do? I mean, it's also something our student consultancy is doing. Yeah, uh, we also did this event last week, and some of our students offer really, really uh, professional services to help companies to build their own social media strategy. And the question is really how to start. I mean, you have you have a company in front of you saying, "I want to do social media." How to start on Monday? <laughs> How would you start this thing? You have half a year time, or let's say three months, a semester. How would you start on Monday with working with this company? Hmm? Checking the company strategy. You look at the company strategy. Yeah. What is important to this company? Okay, fine. What they want to achieve, which is the target that they are really Yes, what is the target? What would they want to reach? Absolutely. Okay, then? That's a very good start. I mean, uh, the answer was not on Monday or start with a fan book, fa Facebook fan page, right? So the first thing is you talk to a company and you try to tell what is your target? What do you want to achieve with social media? Maybe a company needs to have some input. You have to show, look, this is Facebook, this is Twitter, this is LinkedIn, and this is what you can do just as a kind of overview. But then the question is, what would you like to achieve? Yeah? What is your target? And what is your target group? Okay. What is your target group? You want to get in touch with students? Fine. <laughs> then it makes it easier to build the right strategy than just knowing that you want to reach somebody. Yeah? Because students are a special target group. They have special preferences, a special way of using media. Okay? So that's the first thing. I mean, that's always true for every project to firstly understand what do we want to achieve? And in social media, whom do we want to reach? Then, uh, I mean, the point then is really, let's say you want to reach students. I want to reach students. I want to get in touch with students. I want to get in interaction with students. I want that they apply at my company for, for anything, for a thesis or internship or whatever for a job, uh, that's my target. I want to get in touch with you. I want, want to build a network uh, uh, with you. Um, and I'm an HR director in the age of 55. Would it be a good idea if I, as HR director in bracket 55, would start building the fan, Facebook fan page? Yeah. No, why? I don't know what's cool. I, I have, don't have any clue. Really. So, 
This social media, it's a key principle to involve actively your target group. Yeah? Um, you, want to, you want to reach students, so work with students. Or, in the best way, you have students in your company and they do the job posting content. Involve, listen to your target group. That's so critical. Right? And then just do it. Yeah? You will hardly find a slide in my presentation or in any other presentation in this university where you find a process step saying do it. Typically you read the term implementation. Yeah? Now, I want to put it extreme and say, do it. Yeah? That also means don't think too much because you can't plan things really. You have to try things in social media. You, you have to make mistakes and you have to learn from it. Yeah? You, you don't know how things end up. You, I mean, you know this experience where you, you, you post something on Facebook and you think, wow, that's an incredible post. What a great picture. And you get three likes. Hey, three likes only? And then you post something very ridiculous. Accidentally. And then you got 50 likes. You know this experience? You can't tell what people like. You have to try it. You, you have to learn from it. Yeah? And then you, you check and you develop and you... you, 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 you put more efforts on the things where you experience that, they work. That's the plan. <laughs> That's all. Right. Uh, yeah. The main thing you take home is you, 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 you not just do something. You define your target, involve your target group, and then you do it and learn from it. Okay. So I think the best way to, to get a better understanding about social media and human resource management is just to have a look at at some examples. Okay? Um, four trainees in the regional bank regularly post event and information affairs on Facebook. Trainees. It's a very traditional bank in the northern Germany. To plan their activities they run a weekly editorial meeting, Redaktions meeting. One time in a week, they sit together saying, okay, in this week we have this football tournament. Here next week we will have the new trainees on board. So who will take care for which event and make po uh, pictures, post them on Facebook. Um, and by doing so, the trainees try to read pupils and raise uh, 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 the pu uh, and raise the pupils' interest in an apprenticeship at the bank, and that's what they want to achieve. They want to be, they want to be on the radar of, of of the pupils. Moreover, they already build some relations to future potential trainees, to fans. They build this relation, stay in touch with each other. The four trainees received an iPhone for free, and those who already got an iPhone, they got an iPad for free by the bank. Yeah? Uh, they also can use this for their private purpose, of course. Yeah? They defined a social media policy by their own, not by legal. It was not legal who said, this is the rule you want, need to follow, these are the things you can post, these are the things you can't post. They defined their rules, but they got some supervision by the bank. That's a very simple practice which really works. Yeah. Um, Deloitte uh, it's a big corporation international corporation um, in professional services uh, they are all employees were encouraged to produce videos about their company They're using a handy cam or uh, something like this all videos were then posted on the internal platform what is not public and all employees were asked to vote for the best ones, which then, which then were presented on YouTube. So they made an internal voting evaluation about which is the best video 
Um, the ultimate objective of this initiative was to present an authentic picture of the company to the outside world and to attract potential candidates. In the first step, they asked the people, please produce videos, but when you do so, please take care that the following topics are covered. So they get, corporate gave guidance to the people how they should do the video. Response was, no. If you tell me how I should do the video, you can do the video by own. So if you want me to do the video, let me do it how I like to do it. That's the way how it works, and that's social media. Yeah. Employees of an internationally operating company in the telecommunication industry gave HR access to the LinkedIn profile. You might think, I mean, that's natural. No, in that particular industry, in that particular company, that was something new. That people were asked, really, to maintain their LinkedIn profile. And once uh, there is an attractive applicant, his or her relation to current employees is checked, and if possible, HR tries to seek internal references. Oh, there is a new applicant, John, and I can tell from LinkedIn that John is a friend of a colleague, so let's first talk to the colleague and talk about this, this, this candidate. Yeah? And then, uh, the ones who deliver references are then asked to name further candidates in his or her social network who might fit to the profile in question. Just as you would do in an employee referral program. Whom do you know who would best fit to this profile or to our company? There is also a German provider of financial software and they stopped doing employee surveys in the traditional way. Yeah? They asked the people to go to a website named kununu.com yeah? and there the people can evaluate different things and they just use this. And the interesting thing is that this website is really public and everybody can see the results. Right? And that's really, that's, that's really uh, courageous, okay? You know the uh, lemon and orange game? When people are together in a group, yeah, 10 people, everybody gets an orange, everybody gets a lemon. And the, the task is, give an orange to another person with whom you really closely work with and where you appreciate the way you cooperate. And the lemon is for the one colleague where you don't really work with, where you think the cooperation is bad. Okay? So, the orange is for your friend, the lemon is for your enemy. <laughs> what is the result? Some people get a lot of oranges. That's the best case. What is the worst case? Many lemons or you get nothing. No lemons, no orange. You can. Someone would say, well, I would prefer to have many lemons than nothing. <laughs> I mean, if you get lemons, you feel that you are, you are at least you are there. Right? I mean, the power of a man is measured by the number of his enemies and not of his friends. <laughs> so, uh, in a simple internet platform, all employees of international operating company in the computer gaming industry are encouraged to assign up to 10 points to colleagues they successfully worked with. 10 points, you can assign these to colleagues. The amount of points an employee gets by the end of the year determines his or her variable pay. Yeah? That's great. Yeah? The name of this company is Crytek. Yeah? located in Frankfurt, a uh, fantastic company, yeah, producing the Crytek. A German gym franchisor runs an employee manual in the form of internal wiki. That's great. You know, franchising, yeah? And this is a franchise where you can run your own fitness center, yeah? Only for women. <laughs> it's a women. Uh, uh, a fitness, uh, fitness center and they have an employee manual what, how do we deal with different uh, situations what are the rules in our company and these rules are not delivered by corporate 
the rules are defined and written by the people. In a wiki, what is a wiki? A wiki is a document which can, which can be edited by everybody. So everybody can change the rules. If you change the rule, discussions start. <laughs> yeah? And then they will end up somewhere where all people agree to it. Yeah? That's a very democratic way of building an employee and maintaining an employee manual. You all know the traditional suggestion system. There's this kind of box and you can take a piece of paper, write down your suggestion. I have an idea. We should do this. You take the piece of paper and put it in a box. In this company, in a mid-sized insurance company, employees are encouraged to post success, su suggestions, oh, there's a typo, suggestions on an internal platform. Yeah, there's a website, you can type in your ideas. And all employees have the same budget of 500 euros which they can assign to suggestions they prefer. And I can say, well, this is a great idea. I want to assign 10 euros to it. Okay? The one who brought in a suggestion always gets 10% of the total budget assigned to his or her idea. So if you have a great idea and the people like it and they assign their budget to it, you get 10% of it. And then there is the budget for the idea. Okay? Huh? At Daimler, 200 exclusively selected employees write blogs about their daily work life. Yeah, all around the world, these employees are absolutely free in what they write and how they write. It's a blog. Right? Um, the intention is to provide authentic and appealing insights into the daily life of this company and to attract potential candidates. Okay? And now the point is that the traffic of all blogs, yeah, of all these articles, so to speak, uh, is constantly tracked, which enables the company to communicate a real-time ranking list of all entries and bloggers. Bloggers want that their blog, their current article, is read by as many people as possible. So this is a kind of competition among bloggers. A good blog is a blog which is read by many people. Right? So there is a kind of internal competition. As a result, all bloggers compete against each other in reaching the top of the list. Okay? Very interesting. Um, there is a global provider of HR software. The name is Cornerstone. I mentioned this company last time. At this globally leading provider, both employees and clients yeah, are encouraged to post product proposals on a dedicated platform. So they can say, well, I would like to change the software in this direction, or you should end this functionality, or you should do this, you know, yeah. Then these ideas in turn are commented and evaluated by employees and clients. Yeah? A core product planning committee then prioritizes all proposals by taking into account all evaluations and comments on a regular basis. That's the way how they generate new ideas about their products. Yeah? Uh, decisions are always communicate on the same platform. How do we react on which proposal? Those clients who are engaged the most, those clients who are really active in proposing new ideas, are invited to an annual client roundtable, uh, to an exclusive place. I was there once. It's really great. Yeah, so it's a very good way to engage both employees and clients in the generation of new ideas. So, this is a variety of things companies can do, and those things did not exist five years ago. Okay? Um, let me add one thing today, um, and that's important. In the last few years, now I, I, I've, I, I can say I've seen a lot, and I've dealt with many companies that tried to use social media to a certain extent. Yeah. 
Most of them have a Facebook fan page. Some of these Twitter. All of them are somehow using Xing. But when you have a closer look, you find that these different companies use social media in very different ways. And I thought about how can I classify these different ways of social media usage. And I put it in a way that I say, okay, let's have a look at different roles. What are central um, instances do in this game? Yeah? For instance, the executive board or HR or corporate communication, all these central units. What do central units do in this game? And what do the employees do? Right? So these are the employees. These are, let's say, corporate communication, HR, management. Okay? And this is the outside world. And I find it a very good way to understand social media usage in looking how these different fields, the central unit, the employees and the outside world are connected and how much responsibility they have in using social media. It will become clearer when I show you the different types. So the first type I name it uncontrolled passive communication. This is what we still find in many corporations. It's that neither, no, neither corporate communication nor HR play any role in social media usage. They, they do simply nothing. But they have some people, employees, they have their Facebook pages, they Twitter, they are on LinkedIn and they connect to the outside world. But management, corporate communication, they they sometimes not really don't even realize that the people are active in social media. Okay? It's a very passive way of using social media. You let the people just do something. I mean, if this thing is totally empty, <laughs> that's the extreme way. You forbid the people to use social media. Also, that model still exists, but then I would not name it social media usage because it's not there. What I then find, and maybe you can have a look at some bigger corporation. Look at Ernst & Young. Look at Bayer. Look at Lufthansa. Look at Telekom. And you will feel that you will feel who really posts the content. The employees? No. What you find at these companies is that it's not the people who post the content. It's HR, the HR department. There is somebody sitting in HR posting all the content. You can tell it because the content you find on these fan pages are very, very polished. Yeah, Always these nice group photos, smiling people, some very boring content. Yeah. It's just like a corporate newspaper, but on Facebook. Yeah. It's not that you find a pizza. It's not that you find the new coffee machine or something like this. It's polished. It's information just delivered by corporate communication, as if they would do it on a corporate website. They just use Facebook as a kind of website where they regularly post something. What you also find, please have a check on about uh, check these websites, these fan pages. We don't get many responses, not many likes, not many comments on these very polished uh, content. They are boring. They are not delivered by the same target group. So an alternative model, and I name it the delegated communication, you find on the right hand side. Um, Remember the case which I have shown you about the Volksbank Lübeck. Yeah? There are four trainees, four trainees, four employees were asked to post the content. So they are selected and they got the right to post things on the company Facebook page. So they delegated to the people and the people, they then post the content. 
That's a very controlled way of letting people communicate things. It's not so extreme like the one in the middle where you really find only polished content. In that model, you find content that is delivered by trainees, by employees, um, and you feel it, and you, f you see it. <laughs> Contents are different. Some companies go even a step further and say, I need peripheral communication. Management or HR or corporate communication says, social media is about you people. It's not as corporate communication. We will communicate things on, on different media, on the static website, on print media. But everything we do on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, that is up to the employees. That's a really democratic, decentralized approach. You let the people communicate, okay? You allow them to do this. Peripheral communication. I can even go a step further and I can encourage, I can encourage my employees to build relations, connections to the outside world and to the inside world. Saying, we want employees who have at least 400 connections on Xing or LinkedIn. We, we, we want that people have as many followers as possible. We want people use their networks, we want them to spread their ideas, we want, to, we want them to connect with the outside world, with the market, yeah? and with some relevant communities. And we just let them go. Yeah? That's this way, peripheral connection. Yeah? Encourage the people to build their networks. Okay? The last one is strategic connection. I name it that way. That implies everything I just have said on this page. You let the people go. You, you encourage them to, 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 to network. You want the people to have connection. But you use it strategically. Okay? In which way? Let's say you... you you use employee referral programs. Yeah? You say, well, our people are so well connected to the outside world. Let's make strategic use of this. Yeah? We use the networks of our people to find the most brilliant people. That's a strategic uses, usage of the networks which we have through our people. Or think about sales. You say, okay, the networks of our people can be strategically used to increase revenue. Okay? Let's think about it. You will come up with some ideas. What you should take home from these two slides that social media usage is not equal social media usage. It's that it depends on who has which responsibility and how are people encouraged to do what. Okay? And again, you very often can tell from the outside view which way companies go. For instance, the right one. There is a company in Germany which is very far on this. Uh, it's a company where you would not imagine that they are as far as they are. It's the Deutsche Bahn. Uh, do you have a connection on Xing with somebody from Deutsche Bahn? you will find that the people, the pictures on the people of Deutsche Bahn, they are branded yeah, with the colors of Deutsche Bahn. Yeah. They use the Xing profiles of their people to, to really communicate their employer brand to the outside world. Yeah. The people must not do this, but they can. Okay. And in that way, Deutsche Bahn is really engaging the people to build connections at least in some areas, not everywhere, but at least in some areas, and they use these networks strategically. Okay? So, last thing today, uh, um, there are some things companies need to consider. There are some conditions. Um, so, 
not in every company you can use Facebook. Yeah. Um, so the executive board plays a key role. Yeah. If the executive board is against social media, then you lost. Yeah. You can't, you can't do this, or you 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 do it anyhow. Okay. Uh, but that's that's the first thing. Um, and, and, and then the question is, what, what are the chances and risks which are seen by the executive board? I mean, they have the worries. If you are a bank, do you really want that your employees of the bank, that you become friends with your clients, yeah? and you see the clients, see the employee lying at the beach? Uh, I mean, do you really want this? Or do you worry that some, some information which are sensitive really go to the outside world? What chains and risks are seen by the executive board? Okay. Um, is there a culture of openness and trust? Or is a company very hierarchical where all things are decided on top? Yeah. Social media means that you know this, that you must be very open. You must rely on the people that they post and communicate the right things. Yeah. The people in your company, do they naturally use social media? If you look inside the company, and you, for instance, you, 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 you look at all the people which are on Xing or LinkedIn inside your company, and you just find two in a company of 500 people, you'll find that the people in your company, they don't deal with that stuff. If the people don't think in social media terms, you can forget it. Okay? In some industries, this is still the case. Yeah? What are the real opportunities? What can you really achieve with it? Okay? But related to, to the worries which organizations have, uh, I mean, they sometimes are real. Yeah? And that's why companies have some policies, some rules, how people should use social media. Yeah? Uh, what you find on these pictures are is some of the Typical, typical rules which you find in most of the companies. Okay, just for instance, uh, you say um, um, don't communicate any sensitive data about new product developments, about financials, things like this. <laughs> you should not. You should not uh, uh, try to solve. Uh, interpersonal conflict on the corporate Facebook page. I mean, that's clear, yeah? But maybe some people need that rule. The interesting idea behind social media policies is if a company does this well, these rules are not, de de are not developed by, by the legal department. If you ask the legal department to come up with some social media rules, you will find such a binder, yeah? And you can't communicate a binder to the people. So never ask legal. Okay? Um, the better way is to sit together with the people who post in the name of the company and ask them, okay, let's have a workshop. Yeah, as Volksbank did, I've shown you this, this, this case, or all this franchise company, this franchise company. Let the people. Uh, develop the rules and then they understand it and then they accept it and they follow up on the rules okay so that was a lot around social media <laughs> again you know what that is I hope that I could add some some more thoughts from a more academic point of view okay thank you for today and we we'll see us in two weeks